We unboxed it and we gave you a quick software tour. Now that we're away from the excitement and the noise of the exhibition hall, it's time for some quiet time. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is BlackBerry Z10 First Impressions. Okay, so this is our BlackBerry Z10 review unit provided to us by Research in Motion. Just, we've given you a look at the hardware on our unboxing video, but just to elaborate a little bit on that and how it feels in the hand before we pair on the screen, it is definitely a unique device. We really like the look here. I think the white one really looks amazing, but even the black one has a quiet, sort of distinguished dignity to it. And as I mentioned on the unboxing video, this uh, looks like a kind of a rigid textured back, but it's not. It's actually soft touch and it gives you a good amount of grip. As you can see, the screen is no stranger to, to fingerprints here, but uh, that doesn't mean it feels bad under the thumb. It feels in some ways a lot like many other portrait smartphones. The 4.2 inch display is certainly smaller than we're used to seeing from flagships, but uh, to be honest, it's quite refreshing to be able to, to get to the entire display with, with one thumb. Uh, but in some other ways, it certainly stands out nicely. These are, you know, very sharp angles on the front here, but they don't hurt at all. They just add to the aesthetic, kind of a brutally simplistic aesthetic, but it works for this device on a first impressions basis. Powering it on, we can see that the power standby key is mounted up top, but once again, because of the size of the device, that's not a problem as it is on, say, the HTC Droid DNA when your finger's way up here. This is actually not too bad because your finger is sort of already there anyway. We're confronted with the lock screen. This is a Super AMOLED panel. We are informed, having a little bit of trouble loading the BlackBerry specs page uh, at BlackBerry's website right now. Wonder why. As you can see, we've already got this synced up with some of our accounts, and we're getting an indication here that we have some notifications in Twitter, email, Facebook, and a notification, and one of our calendar events is already populated to the lock screen, so that's nice. On the lock screen, you can't unlock this from just anywhere. You have to see this is actually happening. None of this is, is actually having any bearing on the phone. You notice you get a little prompt there. The BlackBerry 10 OS is very nice at prompting you when you're getting something wrong, as you can see. Go ahead and you can see the, the UI peeking from underneath the lock screen as I slide up to unlock. But also, as was demoed in the software demonstration, you can tap and hold on the camera icon to jump right into that. It might be a little bit uh, frustrating to have to tap and hold for a quick launch feature like a camera. We would prefer a hardware key, but uh, that's the case on a lot of phones. At least we do have a jump right into the camera there. Another interesting software point is while the application launcher looks an awful lot like those you'll find on Android and iOS, hopping onto the home screen does not. You've got cards showing your active applications, which can be dismissed with a tap of an X. Uh, but also, despite these soft keys, these are the, we have dialer, search, and uh, camera down here for the soft keys, and those are not omnipresent. If you jump into an app, those disappear, and there is no home button down here. It's just the BlackBerry logo and the microphone that are going to greet you down low. So what you have to do to get back to the home screen is a swipe up from the bezel. BlackBerry already took the initiative to uh, incorporate that into its playbook, so that will be familiar to users of the playbook, but it is something that new users are going to have to get used to. And that brings us into the other gesture that that uh, swipe up from the bottom bezel requires, which is the peak. If you swipe up from here, you can see this is just a peak of your current notifications there, as we saw on the home screen. And you can do that from within any app. So let's just hop into an app here. Let's say we want to hop into weather. Uh, not sure about our data connection here. Yeah, it's going to see we haven't set that up yet. But if you go ahead and swipe up, you can just peek, see if any of those notifications are crucial. If they're not, you can go back into the app. If they are, you just continue that motion. You slide your thumb over to the right, and there we have it. Now, I have integrated a couple of accounts already. As I mentioned, this is my Twitter feed integrated with my email, some other Twitter. I think these are direct messages, or these might be mentions I looked at already. Recent phone call. Uh, more Twitter, and of course, if I uh, if I were more active on Facebook today, we'd see more of that. But that's very interesting to get out of that. Once again, just swipe up from the bottom. And it's not just the bottom bezel getting all the fun. You can, of course, swipe down from the top as well for some familiar settings. We see something like this on uh, Android Jelly Bean, but uh, these are Bluetooth and Wi-Fi toggles. You can jump right into the settings, notification selector, rotation lock, which we're always very happy to see. And if we do jump into settings, we can 
look at all the stuff that we have to explore because we are going to be checking that out in detail in a future video. But uh, there are also handy gesture tutorials which let you know how exactly to operate the OS. And one of the nice things about the bottom gesture, which the gesture tutorial just reminded me of, is when the device is locked, you don't have to rely on this clunky button up top. This is one of my favorite things about the playbook that nobody ever talked about after uh, it was released. You can just swipe up from the bottom and there's your lock screen right there. There is no, there's not a necessity for, for this clunky button action. You just slide up from the bottom when the device is asleep. That is very, very, very handy. Speaking of features we remember from WebOS, we do have this handy search functionality down here which approximates the just type functionality. If we go ahead and type pocket now, even after just the barest of syncs, we get contacts, all my contacts from pocket now, we get messages containing the word pocket now, and then if we want to extend the search down here, we can do so via any means we desire. I can just tap Google, it'll open up a browser session for us and uh, hopefully load a page, yes, searching for Pocket Now, and there it is. Wow, very quick response on the browser there, that's very nice. We'll just hop on back to card view. So that's one of the things we are not big fans of. You really have to, to give it a good, determined swipe to get back into card view. Just a, some, often a, a simple flick does not do the job. You really have to, to deliberately come back here to go back to the home screen. So there is that. And then we also saw our typing experience. Now it's going to take us a while to properly formulate an opinion here, but just so you get an impression, this is not a bad typing experience at all. That's what I tried to say. And we got most of that right. As you can see, the word experience isn't entirely correct there. Oh, okay. Long tap highlights the word and we can just do that. And then what if we want to just, aha, you tap on it and then you get these context sensitive cut, copy, paste shortcuts. That's very nice. Let's go ahead and cut it and then we're automatically dropped into the magnifying glass and we will go ahead and try and type the word experience. Uh, out of the box it looks like that uh, suggestion functionality is not enabled. We're going to go into settings and play with that. Also out of the box it is a very quiet keyboard uh, as far as the acoustic responsiveness goes and there is no haptic feedback. Don't really like that too much but one of the good things is that when you're in a password field you do get a persistent number row across the top. Kind of wish that was consistent across all implementations of the keyboard but uh, you can just tap into it there. Also, people who port from the iPhone to the new BlackBerry OS will be very at home, but people who port in from, say, Windows Phone or Android will be frustrated that no matter what your shift state is, the keyboard stays in all caps configuration. We'll have some more in-depth thoughts on the keyboard when we've had time to play with it, and actually we'll have more in-depth thoughts on the entire device when we've had more of a chance to play with it. This is just quick first impressions on my first hour with the BlackBerry Z10 running the new BlackBerry 10 OS. We're going to have a whole lot more coming up. Follow us in the links down in the description below, and stay tuned for more videos. They are coming up today, tomorrow, and uh, for a few days as we explore this brand new platform from BlackBerry.